trying to impress someone, but I don't know who. Hello, hello. Trying to do roll call as soon as I get the camera right. But I'm quite sure that it's not you. Hey, Wendy. You are more concerned. Swipe down. Trying to flip the camera. Give me one second. Not just what I do, but Thanks for joining, listening to my girl today, Nikki. All right, here we go. Go. Roll call. I see Wendy's on here. I believe we spoke the other day. I haven't forgot about you. We're still going to get you that form. Was fighting with <laughs> the system today. So, roll call, roll call. Who's on the line? Who's on the line? And this is a song called Longing by Nikki Lerner. She's actually a local artist in the Maryland area. Uh, really great artist. And she's just singing a song saying, Longing for God and giving God all of him. Thank you, Wendy, for your understanding, hi. So good to see you, or good to hear from you. Can't see you, but good to hear from you and see that you're on today. So, hey, Proverbs 31, bless. Who's that Proverbs 31, bless? You joined earlier. Tell me who you are and where you're from. We're going to get started in just a second. I just want to give it an opportunity for people to kind of ping on so they don't miss anything. So, how many of you were on the Grateful session earlier this morning? All right, so it is 9.03. So, I'm going to go ahead and tune down my girl, Nikki Lerner. And we're going to talk about some juicy stuff tonight. So this is the first segment of Hey Wendy. Yes, she was on this morning. And I pray that that was inspirational to you. Um, so tonight, this is the first segment of what I'm calling Deals and Dates. <laughs> what is that all about? So Deals and Dates is like, okay, so the deals part of it is dealing with business. I'm a business planning genius. Um, that's why I like to call myself anyway, because I... I like to do a lot of planning and strategizing. But even before all of that, um, I love to talk about relationships and I am just really passionate about helping women making the right choice in their dating relationship. So my name is Joe Bullock and I'm a dating expert and healthy, happy love um, coach. And that's what I do, that's what I'm passionate about. And the reason why I am so passionate about that, thank you for the hearts and the love, I appreciate it. And thank you for sharing this with your friends and followers. The reason why I'm so passionate about helping women make the right choice is because for many years, almost for um, two decades, believe it or not, I made a lot of bad choices when it came to dating and relationships. Um, so it, thank you for inviting your followers. I, I did. I made a lot of bad choices. Honestly, the last crazy decision I made with relationships almost took my life. You know what I mean? And one day I'm gonna have to share that story with you. And because of that, not, not my life physically, um, in terms of, you know, physical abuse, but in terms of, um, getting caught up in the wrong situation that really just compromised my freedom, <laughs> you know, which is just as bad, if not worse. So Anyway, I take some time out just to share. So today we're going to talk about what are three things that a woman needs to do to attract a Boaz versus a Bozo. So many, some of you may be familiar with the story of Boaz. Um, it's a biblical story and it comes from the book of Ruth. And if you're not familiar, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about it so you can, you won't feel left out. So let me just tell you a little bit. So in the, in that in the book of Ruth, it was a young woman who um, was with her mother-in-law. And actually, she was initially, well, she was married because that was her mother-in-law, right? But not only did her mother-in-law husband die, her husband also died. So they both became widows. And she was young, a young lady. So her mother-in-law was trying to encourage her, don't kind of hang out with me. Go do your own thing. You're too young. You know, you've got your whole life in front of you. You know, you're just too young to sit here to babysit me. I'm an old lady. I live my life. I have my husband. I have my kids. You know, don't stop your life for me. But she just was so committed and she said, you know what? 
I'm going to stick with you. You know, that was my husband. I loved him. I love you as my mother-in-law. I'm going to support you. She, she even said, I'm going to serve the same guy you serve. I'm going to serve the people you serve. I'm going to do what you do. I am going to stick by you and support you. So long story short, they went to another town. And um, in this other town, she was just working, doing her thing, living her life, you know. And then she ended up coming across this man who started to express interest in her. And she also was pretty... Uh, you know, forthcoming and, you know, let me make sure that he kind of saw her, if you will. Um, and then he took notice of her and then he was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't let nobody know that you came up in here, you know, because she went on a threshing floor, which was like a place of judgment, um, you know, altar type of place. And she was laying there and he's like, hold on, don't let nobody know that she came in here. And, and he said, hold on, let me find out the situation so I can do this right. Because in those days you had to it's like a kinship redeemed. You know, he had to be the next of kin to claim her. Anybody just can't claim her as wife. So anyway, a lot of people go and talk about that story because he didn't try to sleep with her. He didn't try to do anything. He really was respecting her in that moment and in that time. So a lot of times you'll hear people say, oh, I, I'm, you know, my Boaz or, or things like that. And that's what they mean. Like just a man of character, um, a gentleman, a man that will respect a woman, a godly man, all those things encompass what a Boaz is, which is most women want a man who has those things. So let's see, what can we learn from Ruth? So a couple of things that we can learn from Ruth is one, that she was just confident, you know, and I want to speak to that for a moment because too often we mistake confidence with some type of physical appearance. Well, let me tell you, confidence don't have anything to do with how necessarily how beautiful um, you are. Confidence really comes from within and just kind of knowing that, hey, this is my life and this is why I was created and this is how and why I was created to serve and show up. It's just being confident in who you are, you know, and knowing that. Um, so, so that's one thing I would say about her. The second thing is that she was, she was coachable. I didn't mention this part in the story, but there was one part in the story where her mother-in-law had directed her, hey, that guy you met when you were working at the field, that's, your, that's like your um, husband's next of kin. And he can be your husband. He's a good man. You know, he's got to stuff together. You know, she said, go down and lay down at the threshing floor and, and you know, and make yourself known to him in what, what it, how the other story played out. So she did that. So she was coachable. And I think that's so, thank you for the hearts. Keep showing love. If you, if I, if, you, if I say something that resonates with you, please throw the hearts out there. Let me know that this is feeding your soul and you are resonating with this. I think that part of being coachable is so important because today everybody, so many people, so many women, you know, especially you get a certain age, you're like, oh, I want to do what I want to do. I'm not going to listen to anybody. Well, whether you're 25 or 45, I would encourage you to listen to somebody. Matter of fact, I will go even further. Next time I'm going to put this on the stand so I'm not shaking so much. But um, next, um, I want to encourage you to go even further beyond just saying, okay, um, I'm going to be coachable, but having in a covenant, what is that? A covenant, you can have a covenant couple looking over you. It can be a couple that you respect and trust and they could be helping you on your journey to singleness. I always say, do not do this alone. Yes, thank you, Miss Ruby. Do not walk on this journey alone. Have a covenant couple, a couple that you respect you know, to say, hey, will you watch over me? Especially if you don't have a father figure. It's generally the role of the father. But if you don't have your father or, you know, like, okay, I know my father, but he's really nobody I would want to help me <laughs> in my dating process. That's all good. It's all cool. Everybody's different. Everybody's relationship is different. But you can find somebody, a couple, to kind of watch over you. And they can pour into you and give you advice about how you, you know, about this guy to make sure that he is a Boaz. Because sometimes when we meet somebody, our eyes, you know, oh my God, he's fine. Got the rose colored glasses. Everything's about him. It's good. But you need the outside perspective. Yes, give me the hearts. Thank you for the love. You need that outside perspective to help shed that light on you and on that relationship because they have a more objective opinion. You know, they can see things clearly because when you're dating somebody, something like I say, sometimes you got that rose colored glasses. Everything is good. And sometimes we miss the signs or the flags, which we call stop signs. But we'll talk about that part later. So I just encourage you be coachable listen to somebody and appoint a couple to cover you to help you in that process so the last thing I want to say about her and I have a note because I don't want to miss it what's my last point here we talked about being we talked to her about her being confident we talking about her being coachable 
And lastly, she was extremely committed. She was committed. And oftentimes, ladies, we think being committed is, oh, I'm going to be so committed to him and I'm going to do what he asked me to do and all. No, 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 no. Thank you for the hearts. Yes, we, we don't need to do all that. You can exemplify who you are by how you engage and interact with other people. Your commitment for somebody else. You know, that could be your commitment with God. That could be commitment to your son. Your commitment to putting you first. That's the biggest mistake that we as women make in dating is that we make so much a big commitment and trying to prove ourselves to him and validate him and, you know, to for him to say, okay, she's the one. No, 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 no. Stop it. We're no longer doing that. We are going to be committed to a power greater than ourselves and we're going to honor that commitment. So if you are a follower of Christ, for example, and you say, okay, you go to church every Sunday, you have Bible study every Wednesday. That's it right now. Okay, thank you. I'm glad this is resonating with you. If you go to church every Sunday, you go to Bible study every Wednesday, you say and sending on a praise and worship. When you interact with this man, you need to show that you're committed to God more than you're committed to him. So you can't be making decisions that's going to question your integrity in that moment. And I and I think that's what um, you know. Ruth set a great example with that because she didn't, she, she was committed. She said, I'm going to serve your God. And she did that. She did exactly that. So just to recap, it was three things that we, we covered tonight. And one was dealing with being confident, knowing why, why you're here and why you're serving this moment. You may, they don't have to figure out your whole life mission in five minutes or less, but just be clear about, okay, I, I've been, even if you just, your whole purpose and clarity is I've been here to serve God. That's a great place to start because <laughs> sometimes when we're not clear on at least that, we start serving everybody else. And then the second thing we talk about being coachable, talk about getting that covenant relationship. And then lastly, but not least, we talked about being committed. Thanks for the hearts. Thanks for sharing. But I want you to stay connected with us. Again, I am Jill Bullock and I'm the founder of Detour Movement incorporated and what that is is we help women to renew their mind so they can transform their life because what we know is once you renew your mind you will transform your life and that's in the areas of your spiritual growth in your relationships and in your business and ministry you know and it's just a great thing so I encourage you don't end your journey here connect with us we have a lot of content out there of juicy information so if you're thirsting for information I encourage you to connect with us go on Facebook to DMI fabulous I am members that's one place you can go check out our blog. We have a blog, jillandtrailblog.com. It's our jillandtrail.com works too. And it's just J-I-L-L-A-N-D-T-R-E-A-L.com. Again, that's T uh, jillandtrail.com. J-I-L-L-A-N-D-T-R-E-A-L.com. And guess what? We have a ton of YouTube videos. I was just reviewing one today and I was like, oh my God, this is juicy. <laughs> so we have a ton of YouTube videos you can check out. So I know in my journey of singleness, I was so frustrated and like, okay, what am I doing wrong? What is wrong with me? You know, I just was looking for answers. And sometimes I found answers that didn't align with my value. And I thought I had to do those things. So if this is resonating with you, that's saying that me and you have some common values. And I encourage you to continue to, to, to get more information. If you feel like you're in a season of, you know, you're hungry for information about how to have healthy happy relationships and about dating and if you have any dating tips go ahead and post it on our facebook group go ahead and email me and i will do my best to answer those questions for you you can email me at jill and trail j-i-l-l-a-n-d trail t-r-e-a-l at detourmovement.com so hey this was the first segment of deals and dates so tonight was dealing more with dates sometimes we'll deal with deals <laughs> and we have the morning inspiration so just keep posted and tune in and you will be notified when messages are coming out so i like to say we love you so much god loves you best again be sure to share 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 um you have a good night thanks everyone for joining